working up a little lecture here for music today. And uh, I got involved in it and was having so much fun, I forgot the time. So I'm a little bit late signing on, but hey, I'm here. I'm here. Now I got to go get my chat thing going here. Now let's get that chat thing going. Chat thing is right up here. And we go down here and we go over here. We hit that. And we want to log in. Okay, so we hit that. There we go. All right. I am now logged into the chat. So if you said anything before, now I didn't see it. But now I'm here. Today is music. Music discussion. All right. All right. We're going to talk about music today. Uh, I love to talk about music. Uh, music to me is is a uh, well. It's just okay. Let me close the door here. Let me put this up here. There uh, we go. And uh, all right, there we go. Just waiting for a few people to get on board here. So music uh, is such a wonderful topic. Uh, I will tell you that um, this little discussion we're going to have today is by no means a thorough discussion of music. Uh, talking about music is like, in a way, it's like trying to herd cats. I'm sure you've heard that expression before. Uh, to give you a couple of examples of what people, different people have said about music, um, Thelonious Monk said, trying to explain music is like trying to dance architecture. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's tricky, all right? Um, Miles Davis said, don't play what's there, play what's not there. Which... Um, which is a really good uh, a really good thing to remember. I'm making a note here. I've got notes all over the place because I, I will tell you I'm not formally trained in music, so I have to a disclaimer before we get started. What is going to happen today is going to be my personal take and approach on music based on 50 years of writing songs with no formal training. I have noticed over all these 50 years different aspects of music. Hey Nina, how you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Well, good to read you. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> So, uh, so bear with me. Uh, for those people that know how to read and write music, please forgive my many mistakes that I'll make today. But I still feel, even though I haven't had any training, I still feel that what I have to offer today will be of significant value simply because of my experience writing and also because most of the people writing songs are just like me. They don't have any training whatsoever. They just have, the, their, their training is, is done through um, 
listening to other songwriters and artists and performers simply and then copying them, right? And then uh, trying some original things, right? So uh, when we sit down to create a song, we bring with us two things in this creative process. We bring with us the copy, which is all the melodies and chords and lyrics, of course, that we've heard up until that creative moment. So we bring to the table all these things, right? All these things. Um, but we also bring to the table another voice. So we have the voice that's the copy and the other voice is I know it's hard to hear that voice sometimes, right? And we've talked about this before in other lectures, but I think today it's again important. Hey, Kyle, how you doing? Uh, glad to have you uh, uh, with us. Notice us, the royal we. Yeah. Um, so, um, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, yes, what we bring, we bring two voices, the voice of the copy and the voice of, and that is the voice, now listen carefully, listen, listen now. Change the copy. Change the copy. Oh, yeah. That's your wild voice. And with some... It's louder than others. Some might say, hey, change the copy. Come on. But in some, with some of us, it's very, very hard to hear. But we have to hear that voice and we have to nurture that voice. Um, so it's fun to come up with when you sit down I'm going to do some playing today. Let me uh, let me see if I can uh, aim this thing down a little bit. Uh, so you might be able to see my... I got a new, a beautiful new Gibson. Uh, I wanted to get a full body. This is a cutaway J45, and this is the full body here. You know, it's, it's thicker here, right? It's mahogany back in size with the spruce top, and you know... Huh? Sweet, yeah. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> so, yeah, you want to listen to that voice that says change the copy, right? Because uh, that's the voice that's, um, that's your wild, personal approach to the music. Um that's your style and signature, your, your voice, your personal voice trying to, uh, you know, make its way through all the copy stuff, right? So it's important to listen to that voice, isn't it? So uh, I encourage everyone to, you know, uh, occasionally just sit down and, and just get crazy with your, you know, with your stuff, you know, like I was just doing... came up with that just out of there was nothing that drove me to this I just knew that that was a chord that I had that's a it 
it's a, it's a one, two, three, one, two, flat three. Oh, do you want to go over that real quick? Um, let's go over the number system real quick. Uh, the number system, which was invented in Nashville, and now every, pretty much everybody uses it all over the, all over the songwriting world. But uh, the number system, instead of saying C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, uh, and, you know, C sharp, blah, 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 we do, uh, in Nashville, we do start with a one. One is the key that the song is in. In this case, I'm playing G. And that's the lowest G I can play on the guitar. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And eight is the same as the one. There are octaves. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, right? So if I if I say um, the 1 add 9 that would be adding the there's the 9 there's 8 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, nine. so that's an add 9 Uh, add four, which is often there's the four, one, two, three, four. Or, say one, one, two, three, four. So That's up above, uh, I, went, I went 8, 9, 10, 11, or 1, again, because it's, it starts all over again. That's the higher, just an octave higher one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Which suggests the 4 chord, because this note is in the 4 chord. It's not in the one chord. I see how that's suggesting. It's suggesting this. So we those are the single notes: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we also have uh, chords: the one chord, one, two, three, four chord, and then the one, two, three, four, five chord. And then back to the one. Now the reason why I brought up the one, four, and the five is because all Western music, from classical to folk to R&B to reggae, everything is based on a one, four, five. Okay, one, four, one. Okay. Now, the reason for that, there actually is a reason why that happens. The reason is, has a lot to do with overtones. You know, like we have a basic note, or let me do it in E, because the E is easier to do. We have, that's the basic, that's the basic note that you're hearing. But actually, you're hearing several notes there. You're hearing that note, you're also hearing this note. That's the first overtone. That's the same note, right? And then the second overtone. First overtone. Second overtone. And then there's another overtone. doing these, I'm making, you know, these, you know how to do that on the guitar, where you just lightly touch it right at the, in the middle, between 
these two right directly in the middle where this is equal to that. These two sides are equal. And I, so that's right at that. Right at the octave. And then there's another one here. And then there's one here, for some reason, at the seventh. And they keep going like that. Then there's, you know, there's, there's many, many, many overtones, right? Now these overtones are in every note. When you hear that note, the string is vibrating from here to here, right? That's the basic note, but it's also vibrating from here to here and from here to here. And it's also vibrating, you know, like we said, and all these other different things. There's all these little subtle, there's subtle notes in these overtones. Now, so the overtones, all the overtones in the key of, in, in this, in, 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 in the one, in this case it's the key of G, the overtones in the key of G, in the one, match very closely to the overtones that are in the five. There's a lot of similar overtones. So these two get along really well. The one and the five chord really synchronize, right? They synchronize because their overtones are so close to each other. They're like, I like to call them the husband and the wife. Right, because the husband and the wife, they both get along great. <clears throat> now, they happen to have one child who is a rowdy teenager. He loves his parents, or she loves her parents, but she's a, she's a little bit pesky, and uh, she she likes she's a little independent from the mom and the dad, and that's the four. <laughs> She's a little bit rowdy. There are similar overtones, and a lot of them, but along with those similar overtones, there's also some dissonant notes and in, in, uh, dis, in, in harmonic tones that don't get along with the mom and the dad, with the one and the five. So the four has a little angst, even though it gets along with the one and the five better than any of the other chords. Still, So that chord, that chord, so listen, listen to this. Listen when I when I play the one and the five. Notice how the pull, the five is just begging you to go to the one. So that's a, the, the, the five chord leads you to want to play the one. Oh, please play the one. That's the seventh. That's the one that's of, the, of this five chord. In the five chord, there's, there's the first note of the five chord. There's the eighth note. Now, if I back it down to the flat seven, that's called the seventh chord. Even though it's a flat seven, it's, they call it the seventh. And that's the blues chord, right? And that, that's, that note is pulling. Wants to go to da, da. that pulls that leads you so that the, so the seventh leads you even more but the, so the five and the one get along really well the five wants you to go to the one right but now listen to the one and the four together see how the four is kind of fighting the one a little bit
you know, when you hit this, when you hit this chord, you don't get a feeling like, oh, you've got to go back to the one. No, this one wants to go to the one. All right, especially the seventh. But this one doesn't want to go. This one's just kind of independent. Although they sound really well together, this four is a little more independent, a little bit more of its own. So when you <clears throat> when you're thinking about popular music today, you will notice that a lot of chords, a lot of songs use the one and the four a lot because they're angsty, right? They kind of push against each other a little bit. Whereas the one and the five, you could you could kind of call that a little flabby because they're a little little you know I don't know they're just they get along so beautifully you know what I mean they're just, they're just oh they're just such good buddies so there's no angst there but there's angst between between the one and the four and that's rock and roll man we want some angst right. So um, now, because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, those are all the notes in the scale. That's in, the, that's in a major scale. We can make chords for all those notes, right? We can go one. Now, what's going to vibrate more? What overtones are going to get along mostly with that one? Uh, let's go to the two. One, two. That's, that gets, that's, that's not bad, but let's try the minor. Oh, that gets along a little bit better. So, we're learning something. When we're using the chords of the scale, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, we, some of them are going to be minor. The minor ones get along better, overtone-wise. the minor chord and then the the seven the seven is the one that's the it's the weird one seven is a is the diminished chord you have to make it diminished Sorry. Wait, wait. I have to remember how to make it diminish. I don't make diminished chords very often. It's kind of a weird one. The diminished one, but that's 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 the chord that harmonizes best with. So this is an interesting this is an interesting little bit that we've got going here. So we've got these chords that where the uh, the overtones get along best with the one is the one, the minor two. Sorry, one, minor two, minor three. Sorry regular four, minor, major, that's the five, and then the, and then there's the, there's the minor six, and you've heard the minor six, we've heard, we've talked about the minor six before, now here's, here's one voicing of the minor six, which is high, that's a voicing, Let's do a lower voicing of that same chord. Ah, now that voicing goes into my, goes into the, goes into that low, that E note, right? So that E note's got a lot of authority. So I'm going to use the minor six on the, the low voicing of the minor six rather than this higher one. All right. So we have one, four, five, right? 
Okay, now we have another th another phenomena that's very interesting about these. We have um, we have the um, uh, the relative minor, right? I always forget these things. Relative minor. And these these this is really nice to know. These are these are chords again that are very similar. The relative minor is very similar to the to whatever chords you're playing. So let's play the one which happens to be G. The relative minor to this chord to G is E minor. There's only one note that's different. That note's different. So they're very, very similar. That's the relative minor. So this to me and to every songwriter, is a major, major important factor, even though it's a minor. <laughs> yeah, um, so, uh, as you can probably instinctively and intuitively guess, a major chord is happy, resolved, it's got a nice hat. Let's do the relative minor. Mm -mm. Now that doesn't sound as happy, does it? No, it doesn't. It sounds more serious. It sounds a little sadder, a little more sort of final, sad, angsty, suspicious, dark. Ah, light, happy, right? Well... Now we're starting to get into the emotions of, I happen to be used doing chords. We're, we're working with chords first. It just ter turned out that way. Uh, these lectures are not so planned out, right? So we have a major and we have the relative, which means that you can sing almost the exact same melody. Let's, let's, let's sing a melody. Don't they have such a different feel? Can you, can you dig that? I am manipulating the listener's emotions, and of course my own, by choosing either the major chord or its relative minor. And of course, as you can well imagine, the opposite takes place. If I'm, if I'm writing a song in a minor key, E, which we're going to call the one minor four, which happens to be the A minor. Say I want to just suddenly be happy, I can go the relative major. Remember the melody. to the relative major of both of those chords. 
the relative major of E minor is three is, I don't know if I told you this, maybe I didn't tell you this, but the relative minor is three half steps down. So let's, let's back up a little bit. We've got G, or this is the one. Let's go down three half steps. One, two, three half steps, and then minor. Okay? I think I forgot to tell you that, and I apologize. So the relative minor is three half steps down and a minor. the same with a relative major if I'm let's go up half, three half steps there's the there's the one one two three half steps and a major so that's the relative major Major. Now go up three half steps from the four. One, two, three. And now make that a major. Isn't that so interesting? the rock and roll G and the rock and roll C so I'm not playing the exact chords I'll tell you if you're a guitar player you want to know the rock and roll G disregard this capo because my guitar is tuned down to D so this is actually the way a normal guitar would be tuned so this is G and notice that I'm barring these two instead of playing How flabby that sounds. Doesn't that sound flabby? Now let's make it rock and roll. Let's get rid of the three. There's the three. One, two, three. A major chord's made up of the one, the three, and the five. One, two, three, four, five. One, three, five. But the three, especially in the lower register, really clashes with the one. So when you're playing a chord, you very rarely play the one and the three together on the low notes. On the high notes, it's fine. Like, there's the three. One, two, three, four, five, one. Now, because the one, uh, so watch. The one and the five on the low notes, they get along really good. Oh, wait, wait, what's this? That's the one and the five. That's the blues, right? That creates the blues, one and the five, on the lower notes. See those, that one and the five is just real, I would call that the power, the power duo, right? It sounds, it just sounds like rock and roll. I threw a shape for you. Huh? Oh, and I bit the lemon. Yeah. Okay, so you can see the one and the five get along great, right? The one and the three don't get along so much. On the low, on the lower notes. Notice how this, this sounds so flabby. Ugh. Now listen to this. Oh, yeah. Nah, that doesn't sound good at all. 
So on the low notes, we want to get rid of the three, right? So the rock and roll G is where we, where I, I actually am taking this finger here, and I'm just blocking out the the, the three. I'm just you don't hear hear that. I just with my finger, I just kind of move it over a little bit, and I muffle that string, so you hear the. play it. I don't even put my finger there because my finger doesn't even want to be there because it's just not going to be used. Not going to be used. But I am taking this ring finger and I'm barring these two. The reason why I'm barring those two is it's the five. There's, there's the one. There's the three. There's the five. And there's the one. Well, I'm going to play, I'm choosing to play the five instead of the three. Remember we talked about that? The three not getting along in the lower register? Well, it also kind of works a little bit in the upper registers too. So what I'm playing here, that chord doesn't have any three in it. It's just one, five, one, five, one, five, one, five. So they call that a modal, a modal chord. Because you can't tell a modal chord, you can't tell if it's a major or a minor, right? Because uh, the major and the minor is determined by the three. All right, watch this. Let's see, see let me pick another key here. Um, there's the E major. Let me move this a little bit over here. Give me some room to move. There we go. So, there's the one. And there's the one or the eight octaves. And then here's the three. Now it's 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 that three is fairly high. It's not really low. So I got I got one, five, one, three. Now watch if I change the three to a three to a flat three, flat it, flatten it. I flattened it. Just the three. Now. Ooh. That darkened things up quite a bit, didn't it? Yeah. So, what have we learned? The three note determines whether it's a major or a minor. So if we eliminate the three and play, we're going to go back to the key of G again. If we don't play the three, we don't know. It could be a major or a minor. Because there's no, see, there's the, there's the three. So and there's a three minor. But if you don't play the three at all, you get what we call a, a modal chord. Now the modal chord, it does lean a little bit towards the major, but it's a very angsty major chord, which could be a minor, but it, it, it's kind of saying, yeah, I'm a major chord, but I'm a tough and I'm rough. I'm a rough, tough major chord. Yeah. And there's the rock and roll C. I just went up to the C. And I kept, notice I kept my two fingers on this. Now what I've created there is a nine. There's the one, there's the eight octaves, right? So that's one, eight, nine. So I'm playing a nine chord. I just did a little, a little, uh, little passing note there.
Notice I didn't change this. Didn't change this. Now watch, I'm going to go to E minor. Go ahead. A. I played the one, the four, the five, the minor six. That's the uh, two. One, two. I played all those chords and I left those. I didn't even move that, so my finger's getting kind of numb because it hadn't moved. But. Notice this is. A, that's a five, but it's. It's a suspended, there's a one there, right? There's the one. And that's pulling it. Isn't that a little more, that's a little bit more of an angsty five too, isn't it? It's not quite as, listen how sweet that is. Put that one in there. That's an inharmonic tone, even though it fits. It fits. Um, it fits the the scale. It's the one. I mean, it's the one. So it's inharmonic to that chord, to this five chord. It doesn't harmonize with this chord, but it fits very well in with the key, because it is the one, right? So when you're a guitar player and you want to do rock and roll in the key of G, that's what we all do. I, har I hardly, I, I, in fact, I never play an old-fashioned G. Doesn't it sound so bluegrassy? Don't you know when around we go all day long? It's just, okay, fine. You know, but there's your rock and roll, right? Okay, so that's kind of cool. Let's see now. Um, where were we? Oh, yes. Um, I think, let's see. Did we cover everything? Uh, we covered We covered um, the one, the four, and the five. And then we did the minor, uh, the, the, um, the um, relative minor. So if we want to say if we want to do a song that starts out happy and goes sad, we can start with. Now we want to. I wanted it a little sad, a little bit sadder and more tentative on that fourth pass, like one. Fourth quarter of the time. Instead of going to here, I went to the relative minor of that chord. Go down three half steps. So. I'm going to change the mood, and then I could on the on the fifth chord I could go I could go down to the relative minor of the of the one, which is which is the minor six. So. See how it changed the mood completely. And it almost sounds like a new section is starting, doesn't it? Because that is so radically different than... It really just... It just... Whoa! That's just... And, and, and what, are we, what are we talking about here? Contrast, right? Once again, 
with music, we have our three things to manipulate. We have originality, we have contrast, and repetition, right? So when we create a motive, now that's a motive. I can contrast that by playing the relative minor. I, try, I chose to go back to the real chord on the, on the second one, but I could go relative minor on both of those. See how I really, I really turned it, really turned it seriously sad, didn't I? And then the relative minor of the five, go down three step three half steps one two three and minor so it's it's a B minor it's a it's a three minor one two three three minor so I can substitute the three minor for the five and it'll be darker so I can go Is really dark, isn't it? There's that suspended one. I substituted the, the minor three instead of the na, instead of the five. Down half three, step three. Three, three half steps. Right, there's the. So you see, you have all these wonderful chords to work with. You can work with the one, you can work with the minor two, and occasionally you want to do the. That's very country, you know, to, to, to actually use the, 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 the major two, seventh. Isn't that amazing? Uh, uh, actually, I have a you know uh, I wrote a song called All of Those Years and All of Those Tears Between Losing and Finding My Way. You stayed strong. While I went wrong, you hung on, she did, anyway. All the king's horses and all the king's men stood by helpless when I needed a friend. And you put me together, yes, you. song I haven't sung it in years but uh, notice how I use that use the G and then I use the seven the two set seven now the seven so we've talked about the seven that's that's one of the that's one of the first um, 
call it uh, uh, augmented chords, like you have a straight chord, you have, you have a seven, I mean a straight chord, there's an A, now I can change it, I can augment that by changing one of the notes, uh, let's change that, let's change the, uh, change the one or the eight in this case let's move it down two half steps and that's the flat seven but we call it the seven so there's one of the most commonly used augmented chords is the seven chord right isn't that so interesting And that's again blues, very bluesy. I went to go to thing. Come on today. Want a piece of me. Jump in the way and I go. There's a seven, a D seven. Well, wrong the line. So that's an augmented chord. Seven. Another one is the major seven. Oh. Blown by the wind. Kissed by the stars. Who in the hell do you think you are? You're gone from me. Oh. Trash. See, where is it? Doesn't work on the five, does it? Oh, tragedy. It's very. It's very feathery and light, isn't it? That's the major seven, because it's. There's the there's the one and the five, one and the eight down just down half step. That's actually a real the real seven. Remember one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they call this the major seven because it's major. It's part of the chord. And then the flat seven. Is they just call it the seven. They've dropped the word flat, but it actually is a flat seven, right? Aren't these cool to know? And you can play around with these all day. You know, you can try different things like. Oh, that's a dissonant note. When you hit a note that doesn't fit the scale. note does not fit the scale that's actually dissonant that's that's a very risky and very hard very hard note to to, to use in harmonic would be a, a note that actually does fit the scale yeah. uh, sorry uh, A note that fits the scale, but doesn't fit the chord in the scale. So, that note fits the scale. Sorry. So, there's the C, and then we play an F. Let's let's do an inharmonic tone. So inharmonic tones are notes within the scale, and again, this is all street talk. This could be totally, total horrible talking when we're actually learning music theory, but we have notes that, that, that don't fit the chord that are 
inharmonic tones that don't fit the chord, but they fit the scale, they fit the key that the song's in. So they create tension. The reason why I'm bringing this up is I'm creating tension by, see that nine? One, two, or eight, nine. That note fits the scale, fits the, you know, the, but it didn't, it doesn't fit the chord but it fits in the scale. And so that has, a, that has some nice little angst to it, doesn't it? But this note. Whoa. See, that note doesn't fit in the scale, and it's just terrible. That's very dissonant, isn't it? Ah! Please, I'll never play that chord again as long as I live. Promise. Boy, I was about to really lose it. Okay, but you see what I'm saying? So there, there are notes that you can augment a chord with besides the one, three, five, one. You can change the right, you can do the one, three. There's the flat seven. Cool, huh? I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of it is experimental. Like you can try some notes that don't fit the chord, might just squeeze in there and work simply because they're, again, their overtones somehow become friendly with the other overtones and so they kind of work, whereas other ones just don't, you know. So you just have to learn by experimenting which songs, which, uh, which, um, augmenting notes would be um, inharmonic, which can make things kind of cool, can add tension, right? Or notes that are just dissonant, that, it, that don't fit at all, that just sound hideously horrible. Yeah, and that's, again, because of overtones, right? Tom, Tom Russ, I see somebody made a note about Tom Russ. Uh, I, I actually used to listen a lot to Tom Rush, R-U-S-H, and uh, Julie, I, 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 in fact, I'm a great, huge admirer of Tom Rush uh, in all shapes and forms. Uh, I grew up um, as Tom Rush being one of my, uh, being actually my greatest folk hero was Tom Rush when I was a kid. He wasn't much older than I was. I was like 13 and he was like 17 or 18. And he was playing uh, in Cambridge at the... Um, uh, what was the name of that that club? The Club 47. Ooh, how did I do that? How did I do that? The Club 47 with Fritz, Fritz Richmond on washtub bass. Oh, man. The two of them made the best music ever. I mean, just keep you mesmerized for hours at a time, the two of them. Absolutely freaking crazy amazing right okay so we've got some we've got some rundown of chords and maybe we'll get back to chords but let's get to let's get over to melody for a minute because i don't want to run out of time and not talk about just the basics of melody that again street this is a street explanation uh, i wouldn't call it necessarily street smart but maybe street aware or you know maybe that's a better word Street aware, right? Because uh, I don't necessarily want to call myself smart, but I am aware of things, right? So uh, street aware, all right. Let's let's look at let's look at notes and see what they can do, right? <clears throat> Whoa! I just sent an email, <laughs> and I have no idea why. Okay, I hope it was a good one. Um, so. Notes. Notes. Maybe we should just say a little bit about music in general, just a tiny little bit about music. What I love, what Rick Beresford loves about music. Music goes directly to your emotions. It bypasses language. Ha! Don't you just love it? 
Bypasses language. You don't need language when you got music, you know? I mean, language is fun, but music bypasses, gets to you, and that's where we're talking about prosody, where the music emotionally matches the lyrics, right? Yes. We love that when that happens, right? So when we talk about music, I mean, you know, um, Right away, you've got a feeling there, don't you? On a dark desert highway, cool wind in my hair, warm smell of Kalina rising up through the air. Up ahead in the distance, soft chilly night. Heart was heavy in my upward back. Had to stop for the night. Anyway, I think I was all oh, right. The coffee machine is back. Ha! Ha! The coffee machine is back. Coffee machine, coffee machine is back. I'm about to have me a heart attack. I'm gonna go downstairs and make me one. Caffeine fun, caffeine fun, caffeine fun, yeah, I'm gonna have it today. Sounds like I'm already on caffeine, doesn't it? Well, we have a f funky little junky little nothing to make. Yes. Life's blood, okay? Don't hate me for being all jacked up on caffeine, okay? Don't hate me. Anyway, um, notes, music. Music gets to the heart, but without language. It's so wonderful. So I, that's, that's one of the very main reasons why I'm a musician and not a poet. Because I, I can't write one line even without coming up with a melody for it, right? So that's the, you know, that to me is like super duper important okay music bypasses language and gets straight to the emotion all right now what is music made up of it's made up of notes space and rhythm right there's notes bing there's a space between it and then there's a rhythm between these there's also length and height so I can go bing, that's a long note. Bing, that's a short note. Bing, bing, that's a long interval, right? A wide interval, right? Yeah, that wide interval. And we have short intervals, right? Or stepwise. Okay, uh, so notes can notes can be on or off, and let me tell you. Remember, remember what uh, Miles Davis said: "Don't play what's there, play what's not there." So his point is a very good point, and that is, yes, notes are very important, but the space between them creates the excitement, and also. The length of the note and the and the distance between intervals also creates interest, right? Again, we're dealing with originality, contrast, and repetition. 
Okay, those are the things we're dealing with. So let's look at the emotion of notes, right? Okay, so let's pick a note. Let's pick a note. That's a nice, comfortable note. Now, I can choose to have that note like a quarter note. And again, please forgive me because I don't really know how to read or write music. But in, like, a, like a standard note, a, a note like bum, bum, bum. So there's, there's your rhythm. Bum, 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 bum. I believe that's a quarter note. Those are pretty standard notes. I could I could hold the note longer. Bum, 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 bum. Notice I haven't even changed the note, and holding that note out does create a different feel, doesn't it? So bum, 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 bum. It kind of highlighted that last note that I held out, didn't it? It highlighted it, didn't it? Yes, because it contrasted the other repetition notes. Now, let's try the opposite. Let's do shorter notes. Or let's do a longer repetition before we contrast. Uh -huh. those, those little quickie notes, again, repetition, you kind of get lulled into a pattern. That you're, that's predictable, and then suddenly there's change. But notice that when we go ba da da, that has a kind of oh, whereas the other one has a more oh, slightly different feel. Bum, 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 bum. A little frustration, a little finality, maybe, right? But bum, bum, bum. So yeah, it's going to go, oh, whoa, oh, it's exciting, isn't it? It's kind of like, whoa, hello, what, was, what just happened? Something, you know, it's a different feel, isn't it? Emotions, 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 emotions. We are getting to the emotions of this music. Very important that we talk about this. Okay, so we have, you see how I can manipulate the listener by choosing the length of my notes, right? All right? The next thing is notes can go up and down, can't they? So I can go bum 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 or just bum 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 There's a little quarter notes going up. That has a feel to it, doesn't it? Let's do it the other way. They have different feels, don't they? Going up, bum, 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 bum. going down, bum, 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 bum. Hmm. Little, little, there's a slight tinge of negativity there. And again, depending on where the last note lands, like I, if I go, see, here's my chord. Landed on the one, didn't I? The last note in that progression. So I'm getting back to the resting place. The the one. The the key is in the key of G, and I'm I'm going to the G, which is the one, which is the they also call that the tonic, you know, not the tonic which I like to drink with gin. Oops. Back to music. Uh. So bam. Back to the, see how that's relief. I got back to the one, and I knew because I'm in. I'm going back to the relief of one, right? But if I go, I'm not going to the one. 
it has a kind of a little bit of a sadness to it. Or very intimate, right? Da, 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 da. See the reverse? It has a little uplifting. It's lighter, isn't it? Again, depending on where the where the last note's gonna land. But you know, in a vacuum, notes going up have a tendency to be a little lighter. Notes going down have a tendency to be a little darker, right? So we can manipulate our listeners by choosing which way we're going to go with these notes. And notice that I'm doing one note at a time. Bam, 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 bam. That's called stepwise me melody. I can jump. I can do wider intervals. Bam, bam, bam. Whoa. A wider interval. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> Pretty dramatic, isn't it? So more drama, right? Bam, 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 bam. Pretty soon I'm running out of place. Da da, bum 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 bum. Very dramatic. Those wider intervals. Those are intervals of three. Like they they. Those are the harmony notes, right? Bum 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 Notice how when, it, when I change chords, how it pulls like da da da, da. doesn't pull da da da, because it really fits those notes really fit that five chord da da da. Now let's do it with a, with a four. Da, da, da. Ooh, that's really pulling against that four, isn't it? Ba, da, da. I could use that in a song. I so. It's got a toughness to it, doesn't it? Na, na, na. Or bum, 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 Doesn't that have a little pull of side? Is there? I could reverse it. See how it's happier when I do that? When I'm going up, it's happier when I go down. It's not happy. Again, in a vacuum, not all cases are the same, but in a vacuum, okay? Now we have notes that uh, that arc, right? We have an upward arc, and uh, 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 we have a, a rising arc, and a falling arc, right? So I can go... So it's like weird. It's like getting little... Happy, and I thought, hey, oh, now it's going back down. You know, it's like, <laughs> so you start to get happy, and then you get a little bit, like I'm, I'm leading you happy, but then I'm not, right? Notice I'm keeping the melody the same, but I'm changing the chords, and I'm using the one and the four and the five, which are the most, which are the easiest chords to use in this key of G. The one, the four, and the five, which we told all Western music is based on the one, four, five, right? So, interesting. Let's try another chord that fits in there. Let's try the two, and remember we said the two minor fits. Try the minor three. There's that suspended one. See, so you can experiment around it. Ooh, we went to the relative minor. To darken it, right? I'm, like, no, I'm, I'm playing around with it. Oh, I didn't go to the one, did I? 
I went to the minor, I went to the relative minor. Da, 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 da. Ooh, I went to the minor too. Da, 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 da. Well, that was kind of weird. It? Da, doesn't really fit at all. Da, 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 da. Oh, that fit beautifully. Interesting, I didn't resolve it, but it has a sort of semi feeling of resolve because it's the four, which fits, you know, again, angsty, but still fits with the one. Da, 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 da. So I set up expectations, right? You set up expectations and you either give them what they expect or you give them a little surprise. And music is, there, it, it, there's no better example of this than in the musical world. So, bum, bum. So, but I'm going to keep it on the one. Notice there's a lot of notes now that don't fit the chord, but still fit the, the key. Listen, there's, there's three notes in there that don't fit this chord. Right? Doesn't fit. Nah, fits. Nah, doesn't fit. Nah, doesn't fit. Nah. So we have a lot of dissonant, a lot of um, not dissonant, but inharmonic tones in that when I go to the four. Um, little angst. Little less angst. And we know the last note is the one, so I'm setting up an expectation to hear the one. Oh, I didn't hit the one, I hit the four. Surprise, I hit the four. It still fits that chord. It's a little sadder. Da, da, da. I went, ba, 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 da, da, da. Ah, ah, ah. See how I'm manipulating the listener by my choice of going up and down. Or, or I have a, that was a rising arc. We have a, uh, we have a falling arc. Da, da. Starting to get kind of sad and final. We pulled it out. So there's a little hope there at the end, isn't there? So that's a falling, a falling arc, right? And notice again, stepwise, stepwise notes are very relaxed, aren't they? And then notes with wider intervals have more drama. Bum bum bum. So I can go a lot of drama and then back off the drama. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, da, da. That's, so that's a stepwise after the first one. Bum. Quick, big, wide interval. Bum, bum, ba. Then from ba, da. That's a step melody there. One note, just one note higher. Da. So, bum. How I manipulated, I went da, ba, 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 ba. Ooh, that was kind of unexpected. Those quick, um, quick notes uh, when we were using a lot of you know, like medium notes, let's call the quarter note a medium note. So we have medium, long, really long, we have medium, short, and really short. Da 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 da, we'd be really, you know, that's I think 16th to 30 seconds, whatever. Da, 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 da. these choices different emotions you know like ah emotion for the quicker ones and ah hmm final different no. so you can see how i can ma manipulate up and down and longer and shorter we can also manipulate with 
pushing and pulling with the rhythm, right? We can anticipate. So, and da, 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 da. notice I pushed that. Um, uh, Let's see what they're going to call that uh, uh, retard is, oh no, retard, no, uh, push the beat and being behind the beat, all right? So down, I'm going to push the beat uh, on the on the fourth note. See how I push that? It does make you kind of go, ooh. A little ooh, it's like a little tickle under the ear there, isn't it? Ooh, you know, yeah. So you can push the beat, and of course, if you do a lot of pushing and 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 uh, and retarding, retarding is let's retard the fourth one. See, I went down but you heard you didn't hear the note when I went down I withheld right has kind of a it's kind of Latin in it Notice I retarded there. Da, 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 da. Then I'm pushing my head down on the, where the beat's supposed to be. Dum, bum, 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 da. No, sorry. Dum, bum, bum, bum. Da, 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 da. Dum, 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 da, da, da. Now I can go, I can do both. Dum, da, 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 see, I'm 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 push I'm pushing the beat on the second one, or third one. Dum 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 da 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 da. See, so you're getting into all these little rhythmic things, aren't we? You know, retarding, pushing. Also, you can choose another thing you can do is you know, songs. You know, a song starts on the downbeat. One, two, three, four. Typically, in a 4-4 four, four beat, we have four, four measures. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And the second one, two, two, three. Usually comes in pairs. Usually pairs, so it's a total of eight. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three. Notice the two is not quite as hard as the first one. So you have sets of sets, two sets of four, right? And so you can choose to go up single notes, go up, jump up notes, be wider notes. You can choose, oh, we didn't co cover one of the things. We can also repeat notes. And in pop music today, boy, do you hear a lot of repeating notes. Woo! Dun 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 and then we can give it we can give it rhythm with retarding and pushing. Retarding and pushing so da 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 driving you crazy, isn't it? Yeah, I'm creating tension, right? Like some repetition to a point is attention getting, and oh, that's kind of cool. You keep it going and you get more angsty and more angsty and more angsty, which the weekend, God bless that weekend. I just love him so much because he loves to repeat so much. I just love repetition so much. Yeah, he'll just, he'll get a, he'll get on a thing just go to Spotify and, and play some weekend songs. 
And you will hear so much repetition. God, I make with David, 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 You know, just da 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 da. You'll pick a little motive or, or motif, whichever way you want to say it. If you want to be just so perfect, you can say motif. Or if you want to be just a normal dude, you can go motive. You know, it's a motive. You know what I'm saying? I got a. I know a guy. I got a guy. Motive. I got a motive. Yeah. So. So so much stuff here. You know, we're just trying to get it all crammed in. Oh, it's time for me to go. But I think we've covered a lot of ground here. And you may want to go back and, uh, you know, um, and check all this out. Uh, um, so uh, so we have, we mentioned the downbeat. Bum, bum. You can do, um, you can do what we call um, um, a pickup notes. We can, before the downbeat. Da 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 Notice I did ba da 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 one two three four ba So you can do pickup notes before the downbeat. Da 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 those are just one pickup note. Da 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 that's two pickup notes. Da 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 so you can you can start this melody before the downbeat, which is very cool. You can do so many things. You can do a. You can. These are some of the other ways you can manipulate. You can have sudden stop. So. That got your attention, didn't it? So you can put a sudden. You know, we're always trying to create an arc of interest, and we want it to always be rising. But one of the ways we can contrast is to have a sudden stop which suddenly stops the momentum, but it doesn't stop the interest, right? Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Um, we have a pause. Pauses are kind of nice. Remember, it's the space between that creates the rhythm, right? Where you place those notes in the space of time is what creates the interest. We have a hold. We have what I call an echo or a repeat. Also do the reversals. So if your if your if your verse is notice I'm doing ascending, rising in the verse. Now for the chorus. I could do a descending. That was a, a, a rising arc, right? So you see how I can manipulate? I can go ascending, mostly ascending during a verse, and then I notice I did pick a higher note to start with for the chorus. Na, 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 na. So I'd have somewhere to go. I don't want to start on a, no, a low note and then go below my singing ability, because we always want to choose melodies that are singable. And by singable, I mean the average male voice is, a, is literally an octave and maybe two, maybe three notes. 
I know. It's not a lot. It's more. It's much less than you would think, isn't it? Women have a tendency to have a slightly bigger range. Maybe, you know, a, a, an octave in four notes. Maybe five notes. And yeah, 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 I know. Uh, Ariana Grande, which, by the way, is my personal girlfriend. Ariana, I see we got a thing. So, uh, Ariana... You know, so famous for what, four octaves or something, five octaves? Who knows? I mean, she sings a note that's beyond the piano. She, I mean, the piano can't even sing notes as high as she can sing. And then, you know, and Celine Dion and some famous people for uh, 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 that have, you know, incredible ranges. Um, Justin Timberlake has a hell of a range. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, so people are known for ranges, but, but the average is surprisingly small, right? Yeah. Um, the other thing I like to bring up, uh, and again, we're, we're, we're closing this down here, but I got a few more things, uh, what we call a melisma, which is, uh, which is singing more than one note for a single syllable. So I can go. on one uh, right? So that's a melisma. And that's fun to do sometimes. Break it up a little bit, you know. You think I love you. Yeah, you do. You think I love you. Yeah, you do. But I love you. Notice that in inharmonic note to a harmonic note. Resolve it. Notice how I create that sense of tension release. I could do the opposite. Love you. Oh, oh, that leaves it like that's not finished. Love you. Yeah, you know I do. Oh, thank God. Because that note fits this chord. Yeah, you know I do. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you see, tension, release, tension, release. Predictable, unpredictable. We're all, that's what we're doing throughout this thing is this wonderful herding of cats, right? Wonderful, going straight for the emotion, experimenting around. We don't have to worry about words, throw words away. Music is so much fun for me because it's so much more esoteric and um, mysterious it's expressing the mystery directly from the universe to the ear. Universe to ear. Universe. Is the ear tuning in? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's a... fit the chord but oh not fit fit so tension resolve doesn't fit the chord oh, that one did that's one of my favorite intervals is the minor the one minor to the sharp five. There's the five. There's the the five is. There's the one. There's the minor five. Five. Oh, that's the sharp five. They they fit really nicely, don't they? That's one of those cases. Again, herding cats. One of those cases where an inharmonic tone fits really nicely. Because that note is not in the scale. Oh, it is. To a minor scale. It's 
So it's nice, minor to major, minor to major, and then if we wanted to make it really happy, we could go to the, we could go to the relative major of this minor chord. Remember going up three, half steps? One, two, three, it's G, so. Let's make it happy now, relative major. dropped it down. Sad again, didn't I? I gave you a little happiness. So you see how this wonderful thing happens? Uh, and then there's a, yeah, so there's loud and soft. That's the last thing we haven't talked about is loud and soft. Very, very important again. You can sing the same, you know, same melody. Da -da -da. I've got reason to believe you're cheating. I've got reason to believe you cheat. See how the difference? Such a difference. That, that soften just brings you intimate. It, 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 it's like going. Don't you really believe you're cheating? Don't you really believe I want to tell the world? And then I got an intimate kind of world. This is a little secret I've got. Emotions, emotions, it's so important to know the emotions, right? I hope this has helped you to understand. Oh, one last thing. I know there's so many last things. Um, if I'm telling a story, like, uh, let's say, uh, a man, you know, uh, my feet walked across that sawdust floor over, over to the barroom stool. My feet walked across that... The feet walked across that sawdust floor Sat down on the stool Did you notice there's not much of a melody there? Feet, but my boots walked across that sawdust floor My ass sat on the stool <laughs> Feet walked across that sawdust floor I don't want to distract. Now watch, watch if I do a soaring big huge melody my feet walked across that hardwood floor and my feet sat on the stool. And my feet sat on my, and my ass sat on the stool. You see what's, the see, it's like, whoa, that is so distracting, right? So uh, I, I keep in mind when I'm telling a story, I don't want my melody to overpower the storyline, right? So when I come up, with a melody on its own without any lyrics that's da 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 ba da da ba da 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 ba da da I know that's going to be an emotionally driven song I'm going to talk about my emotions to the, to the melody I'm not going to talk about a storyline so that's my last little thing that I wanted to mention to you don't make sure, again, this is prosody, right? That you want the melody to fit with the lyrics. So if the lyrics are complicated and full of details and there's a storyline, yes, you can write interesting melodies. Of course you can. I'm not saying write boring melodies, but keep in mind, don't let the melody overpower the story because... We've said this before many times, but music overpowers lyric. Always, always, always. If a, if a melody is sad and the chords are sad, you're going to have a sad song no matter how happy the lyric is. And the, and the audience will, will, will pick up the irony of that, like, wow, this is such a sad song and he's saying such happy things. That's ironic. You know, that's weird. And they pick up, that's weird, you know when we do it on purpose, of course. The bad prosody be, would be when you don't, you didn't do it on purpose and your music just happens to be just a little too happy for this sad. You know, you, uh, when I'm co-writing, this will happen to me. Um, I'll be, you know, dancing along and having a good time. And, and we're, 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 say we're writing a sad song and then I'll, I'll play a major chord, you know, uh, halfway through the verse. And my co-writer might go, you know, I think that's just a little, that, that major chord there is a little too happy. Uh, can we 
can we go minor uh, or at least pick a chord that doesn't harmonize with the note you're singing so we have the little we have that little inharmonic tone which creates tension see it's it's, it's all very cool oh also we talked about stepwise melodies are relaxed but half steps are full of tension so watch this da, 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 da. now half steps da, 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 da. wow so half steps are a whole nother thing right so when you go into the half steps because there's 12 half steps in a um in a in a scale and there's eight full notes but a total of 12 notes and those other notes are half notes and singing half notes uh it, it creates a lot of tension uh, it sounds very mysterious na, 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 na. isn't that kind of spooky da, na, da, 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 da. you can hear all those dissonant notes and in the, the inharmonic tones in your ear you can hear it as as i go as i creep up or creep down da, 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 da. see half half notes are really creepy and on that creepy halloween note i must leave you children to go about my life that i have through that door so i'm going to say goodbye for now I think we might be pretty much done with the basic lessons and starting on Tuesday we are going to start analyzing and deconstructing deconstructing lyrics again like we had been doing but now you've got this huge cata catacomb huge cave huge cornucopia of basic knowledge that you can go over the, these lectures, right? And I'll just remind you, I have not nearly covered, nearly covered what music can do and cannot do. This is very, very basic beginner stuff, right? Very basic beginner stuff. If this lecture has gotten you interested in music and music theory, by all means, Berkeley School of Music has courses online. I'm sure MTSU and Belmont also have courses online. Vanderbilt may have courses online. These are just, you know, off the top of my head. UCLA, I think out in California, they have some wonderful courses also, uh, depending on where you live. Um, uh, there's some famous uh, schools that are famous for music. Uh, believe, believe it or not, uh, uh, New Mexico Eastern State College in Portales, New Mexico, has is famous for its music program. It's out in the middle of freaking nowhere, right? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I won't go any farther into that. Uh, but their music school is superb. Um, so um, until Tuesday, when we start deconstructing songs again. Um, I want you to have fun with all these tips that I've given you. Uh, experiment, try new things. Remember, in order to write a great song, you've got to take chances. You've got to push your limits. Pushing limits causes you to make mistakes. So, make more mistakes, okay? Make bigger and better mistakes. There's your originality coming coming out. Your crazy mind, remember? The voice that says change the copy? Listen to that voice. And then you can always go too far and then pull it back. I always like to be risky at the beginning and then pull it back rather than gently kind of ooching forward. Nah, 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 nah. Go, go for it. Get out there in the bushes, in the rough patches, in the dirt roads. Try all that stuff. And then go, whoa, that didn't work. But man, that was fun. Oh, that didn't work. That was fun. That didn't work. 
oh, wait, yeah, wait, that did work. Oh, that's fantastic. See what I mean? You know, and then you get fantastic stuff quicker because we want your songs to be fantastic. Okay. We ran way, way, way over. So, um, but nobody texted me to say, Rick, shut up. So here we are. Uh, and you know that you know the drill, right? You know the drill. Uh, keep her on the double nickel, which is what the truckers used to say. I don't know because that was back in the speed limit was 55. Remember that? Yeah, it was in the 70s. Keep her on the double nickel. I'll see you on the flip flop. That would be Tuesday. And uh, Spanish is the loving tongue. Adios, amigos. I love you.